Well, good morning. Uh, I get to talk about whitefish. Uh, whitefish known uh, to the Ojibwe on the shores of Gitchigumi as a decom egg. Uh, Lake Superior whitefish is a benthivore. It occupies waters less than 325 feet. I'll talk in feet and I will talk in pounds. Um, <laughs> that's about 23% of the lake's surface area. They're an important part of the fish community. They provide an important commercial fishery and a source of local income and food. The fish community objective is to maintain self-sustaining populations of lake whitefish within the range of abundances observed during 1990 to 1999. Lake whitefish home the spawning grounds from locations typically within 25 miles of the grounds. The behavior has resulted in the creation of distinct stocks. In Lake Superior, lake whitefish spawn in early November over coarse sand or rubble and in shallow waters, embayments, and nearshore areas. Presently, lake whitefish do not appear to be limited by habitat. <coughs> Protection of spawning reefs and nearshore areas, which appear to be important to young lake whitefish, is imperative. Threats include shoreline development, dredging, and the movement of stamp sands, a remnant of copper mining. Lake whitefish are resilient to exploitation. However, populations in Lake Superior re were reduced in the early part of the 20th century, possibly as a consequence of the progressive elimination of discrete stocks and or habitat loss. Over the past two decades, populations have increased significantly as reflected by increased commercial catch. Starting in the 1830s, commercial fishing increased in intensity. This continued through the 19th century and well into the 20th century. After a lull in the 1960s when, lake trout, when the lake trout fishery was closed, whitefish harvest increased again through the 1990s, afterward leveling off. And for our uh, State of the Lake report uh, from 2000 to 2011, the lake-wide lake whitefish harvest ranged between 2.6 and 3.5 million dress pounds annually. During our last reporting period, Harvest seen uh, during 2000-2005 ranged between 2.6 and 3.1 million dress pounds and averaged 2.9 million. During the current reporting period of 2006 to 2011, the average harvest was about 400,000 pounds higher or 3.3 million dress pounds and ranged between 3 to 3.5 million. The lake whitefish fishery consists mainly of trap nets and bottom set gill nets. The recreational fishery, although present in some areas of the lake, currently has insignificant harvests. Trap net effort data is presented as the number of lift days on the y-axis by year on the x. The number of trap net lifts range from about 4,500 to 2,700 during 2000 to 2011. During the last State of the Lake report, the average number of lifts per day was roughly 3,400. And from 2006 to 2011, the average number of lift days was nearly the same at 3,500. Bottom set gill nets are commonly used in both the U.S. and Canadian waters of Lake Superior to capture Lake Whitefish. Gill net data is presented here as thousands of linear feet set on the y-axis and on the x-axis here. Gill net effort ranged from 17.1 to 22.4 million feet during 2000 to 2011. During the last State of the Lake report, the average gill net effort was 20.5 million feet. From 2006 to 2011, the average gill net effort was similar at 19.3 million feet. Although stock assessment models, which provide a more robust estimate of abundance over time, have been developed in eastern U.S. waters of lake, the only currently attainable lake-wide matrix of relative abundance is catch per unit effort from the bottom, the bottom set gill net fishery. The following graphics will have catch per unit effort as dress pounds of lake whitefish harvested by the bottom set gill net fishery divided, divided by thousands of linear feet set by the large mesh gillnet fishery in areas from Wisconsin, Michigan, and Ontario. Note that I only included fisheries where I could separate the gillnet harvest from the trap net fishery. This should provide a good indication of relative abundance. 
Since 2000, catch per unit effort has ranged between 72 and 118 dress pounds per thousand linear feet of gill net. Recall the fish community objective for Lake Whitefish. We want to stay within the range of 1990 to 1999. This range is depicted here by the upper and lower straight lines. It's from 44 to 118 dress pounds of Lake Whitefish per thousand feet. I won't keep saying that. Um, CPUEs during the 2000 to 2005 state of the lake fell within this range and averaged 86 dress pounds. From 2006 to 2011, got behind one. The average was nearly the same at 110 dress pounds. Lake Whitefish continued to provide an economically viable commercial fishery with stable catch rates and the species continues to be a significant component of the fish community. As I mentioned earlier, stock assessment models provide a more robust estimate of abundances over time and have been developed in eastern U.S. waters of the lake. The stock assessment models estimate abundance indices for ages from 4 and up, and from 90 to 99, as indicated by the upper and lower straight lines, estimated abundance ranged between 1.58 to 2.03 million fish. With the exception of 20, 2007 and 2011, the annual estimated abundances have been within this range. For the current State of the Lake reporting period from 2006 to 2011, the average annual abundance is lower by about 450,000 fish than that seen during the 2000-2005 reporting period. Biomass ranged between 2.3 and 2.9 million kilograms from 2000 to 2011. The average biomass was nearly the same from 2000 to 2005 reporting period to that seen during the 2006 to 2011 reporting period. Recruitment, given as the number of age 4 fish, varied between 0.36 and 0.65 million fish from 2000 to 2011, and recruitment during the 2000 to 05 time period averaged about a half million fish, which is 77,000 more fish than seen during the 2006 to 2011. So what are the next steps? Well, we need to verify and quantify the habitat required to support these lake whitefish populations. Qualitatively, we know that the nearshore areas are important and that the embayments and clean, clear native sand beaches provide for developing whitefish. We need to protect and in some cases restore the habitat we have. A case in point is state stamp sand deposit, deposited during the uh, 1930s, the last mining boom, it's still moving along the shoreline and encroaching upon both spawning reefs and covering native sand beaches where young of the year whitefish are found. And in this picture here, you can see the stamp sands are these gray areas and they're migrating down to this break wall and then you can see the native sand beaches here. And this is an important spawning reef in Lake Superior on the east side of the Keweenaw. We need, um, we need to look at expanding stock assessment, model, stock assessment models to other areas of Lake Superior, which will help us to better estimate abundance over time and to partition mortality. Also, we need to continue to expand the collection of diet data for Lake Whitefish, because it's with this data that we'll better understand their role in the fish community. And for example, the work that uh, Dan presented on the cisco eggs being eaten by whitefish. Um, you know, until recently that was undocumented, and I think more spatial temporal sampling is, is needed. So, in conclusion, uh, if you remember nothing else, I had, a, I had a professor, a physics professor, I always used to say this and I loved it. If you remember nothing else from this presentation, remember these three things. <laughs> Lake whitefish remain an important part of the fish community. Lake whitefish sustain an important commercial fishery, a source of local income and food, and indices of relative abundance are within the 1990 to 1999 range. And with that, I'll take questions. <laughs>